guys, how are you doing? I'm Nicole Crank and welcome to my living room. Chanel, my little Pomeranian and I just wanted to talk to you for a little bit today about the recipe for success in life. Actually, in a minute, we're gonna go into one of our women's events that was called Ooh La La. Salt and sugar look the same. Salty Christians, not like, oh, I'm the salt in life. <laughs> no girl, you salty. Before we get to that, I just wanted to talk about the fact that I am not a kitchen person. I'm a messy cook. You can imagine what my kitchen looks like right now. My best dish that I make is reservations. So, hello, my kitchen appliance is the telephone. Uber Eats, we've got a thing in Florida called Cravey. What's your jam? What's your thing? What do you, what, how do you order food when you order out? Because it's not the same anymore. So I want you to tell me that. Get on your, my Instagram right now, Nicole Crank, and start letting me know how do you order your food. You can also go to NicoleCrank.com. And NicoleCrank.com, there's a place to ask questions. There's a place for you to comment. And there's also fun stuff like there's a free download. There's a blog. There's all kinds of fun things. You might, Chanel came back and joined us. And I want to make sure that you join us every single week for the Nicole Crank Show. Make sure you tune in on Mondays and Wednesdays at noon central. Make sure you tune on in Fridays at 11.30 central. Set your DVR, we don't want you to miss it because we'll be gonna be talking about things about getting to that next level, baking it up, making it good. So what are some things that you can do in life? So we get to thinking about other people's giftings and what they're good at and what we're good at. And then and tell me if you hate this part. I hate it when like I've got a thing and then somebody else tries to do my thing that I'm doing as if they were me. Why don't they just do their thing? And are they gonna be better at my thing than I am at my thing? And then I get insecure and then I get nervous. And the thing is you're unique. You're your own person. Matter of fact, they might have your recipe, but they can't bake your cake. Somebody tweet that. Go ahead, put it on your Instagram story right now. They might have your recipe, but Chanel, they can't bake your cake, baby. Mm -mm -mm. I have her on here with me today because she feels a little floofy and a little French, and sometimes we just need to feel a little fancy. So we're getting ready to go hang out with some berets and some cakes, and actually, I just thought of this. I would like to just gather some recipes. That would be fun, right? To gather the recipes and share them among the whole Nicole Crank crew. So if you have a fave recipe, I want you to go to NicoleCrank.com. I want you to put your fave recipe on there. We'll get busy baking some stuff up in the kitchen. And matter of fact, we'll take you to my kitchen and we'll bake up the fave recipe. And we could do some cooking together like legitimately for real, kind of like what we're getting ready to do on here. But right now, God's got bigger things for you. You know what? God asks us for what we've got so that he can give us what he has for us. So he wants that thing about you, that uniqueness, that thing that you're insecure that somebody else can do better than you. You know, my husband says sometimes, he says, nobody can be a better me than me. So I'm going to be the best me that I can be. Let your freak flag fly. Be you. Bake the way you bake. Put the salt in your chocolate chip cookies because I particularly love that. My mom can't stand it. That's okay. She bakes her way. I bake mine. Bake your way, baby. Live your life. Be who God created you to be. Now let him work on you a little bit but be who he called you to be because God has called you to be the best you that you can be. So be you, be confident. Sit up a little straighter right now. Just, just sit up a little straighter. Put that chin up a little bit. You were called to be here today. God called us to intersect in this space because he needed you to know, ooh la la, I love that girl. You know what? Let's go into the ooh la la message for just a minute. Then the subtitle is The Cost of the Cake. <laughs> All right. We went grocery shopping last night, me and Ashton did, and we went to buy the stuff for the cake. So I just wanted to let you know we were on a time budget, if you know what I mean. So we got like the boxed cake, <laughs> the canned icing, and I was even telling her, hey, buy the pastry bag with the, with the icing already in it. <laughs> Does anybody understand decorating in a hurry? 
right? And we got to check out, and it was like $37 to bake this cake. And I'm like, girl, this cake better be cute. <laughs> this is ooh la la, a Parisian cake party. Oui, oui. Oh, <laughs> oh c'est moi. That means it's me. It's about all I know. <laughs> so we brought, all the, we brought everything home, and she got to work today. She finished her schoolwork, rushed to the kitchen. She starts putting everything together. And how many of you know if you're going to be in the kitchen, you got to have the right stuff on? Yeah. Right? So you got to have your apron on because you can't mess up all your cutie cuteness. And so we've decided to wear an apron about how she is brave and she is courageous. Yeah. Right? And then the beret is good for a Parisian cake party, but really, if you're going to chef it up, you really need to look professional. I figure if you can't do the job, you might as well figure you look like you could. <laughs> so how about that? So we get in the kitchen. Ashton gets to work. We is her and the mouse in her pocket. <laughs> and she gets to work, and she makes the cake. And then I'm outside studying, and I'm outside praying and doing my thing. And all of a sudden, I get mom. Mom, you need to come in the kitchen right away. David says, what's happening? Is the house on fire? <laughs> Mom, just come. The house isn't on fire, but I'm like, okay, the, the oven's on fire. I get inside. I'm like, what happened? What happened? What happened? She opens the oven. I expect to see flames, and I see cake dripping off the sides. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you know there are different kinds of tragedies? So the cake is dripping down off the side, and I said, honey, what happened? And she starts talking to me about it, and it's just oozing out. I said, how much longer does it have to go? She said, oh, it's done. <laughs> when it's pouring out the edge, I said, oh, no, it ain't. <laughs> She's like, no, mom, it's had cooked enough time. I said, baby, that cake, I don't think it's going to be edible. She said, I don't know what happened. Betty Crocker messed up. <laughs> we like to blame other people for our problems. <laughs> And I said, no, I think you made a mistake. No, mom, I did it. I said, well, tell me what you did. And she pulls out the box, and then she reads it to me. How many of us know just because the instructions are printed on the box doesn't mean that's actually what we did? Have you ever sworn that you did something and then realized you didn't? Okay, okay, me too. So she, you know, we find out we, she probably put a cup of water in. She put in the egg. She mixed everything together and thought, oh, I need to put the cup of water in. Everybody say mistakes happen. And I brought our mistake with us. This is what our mistake looks like. No. The bonus is right there down on the bottom, that thing where it boiled over, it looks like a chicken. So we made a cake chicken. So Ashton's like, Mom, please don't tell everybody what happened, please. And I said, baby, but it's so good. My Facebook, my online streaming friends, everybody needs to know that we make mistakes. Yeah. We relate in our failures. Yeah. So she begs and pleads, and her dad runs to the store, buys her some new cake. She comes back. She mixes it all up. By the way, husband, you are the hero of our home. <laughs> hey, baby, how you doing? How about we go on a date later? She mixes it back up, she gets it done, she bakes it, it comes out perfect, she de decorates it, it is so cute. Now all I have to do is get it on a plate so she can bring it. That's the easy part. Except for, she didn't realize it's probably better to decorate the cake on the plate that you're gonna bring it on. <laughs> We're kinda new at this cooking thing in our house. <laughs> so it was on a wire rack and it was still a little warm. Y'all are fortune tellers. <laughs> so I made a little video of how excellently I made this transition. I ended up making this beautiful cake on this wire rack. And as her mom tried to get her to help move the decorated cake to the wire rack. Speaking of cake smash, epic fail, mom. Way to go! She's gone. The cake's still here. You know, don't miss the biggest blessing when things get tough. You know, sometimes the recipe goes wrong and it's a disaster. I love how I talk about recipes on the couch because this is where I cook stuff up. You know, you can't do all your cooking in the kitchen. Come on girls, you can't be good in every room of the house, right? I'm good in the living room. I'm good on the couch. 
My cooking is in my brain. I do my, my baking with my mouth. And I gotta be okay with that. If you guys invite me over for Christmas and we have Christmas cookies, mine aren't gonna be the favorite. But I'm gonna be fun at the party. So when it gets tough, because we are not good at everything. Right, Chanel? Chanel says we're not good at everything. And that's okay. Chanel is very good at being cute. But she's gonna be a terrible security dog. Like if somebody comes to the door and she answers it with her little bark, so they're just not gonna be afraid. She's not good at security, she's good at being cute. And she's just nosing around right now. And that's what I love about this format that we're doing. We're not formal, it's not super studio. We're hanging out on the couch, just talking. Because I know that life can get tough and you can be in those tough spots. But here's what I wanna encourage you with. God is with you. Matter of fact, Deuteronomy 31 verse eight says that God goes out before you. Like before you ever got there, like last year, like two decades ago, like before your parents were ever dating, God was already way out in your future for this moment today when they walked out. For this moment today, when you don't know if you can keep working here because it's so hard. For this moment today when you, you, you can't find a job and you don't know what you're gonna do. For this moment today when you can't understand why you can't find somebody, your life, your life partner, your mate. For this moment today when no matter what you do, you feel like you're failing. God, eons ago, decades ago, millennials ago, he was in this moment right now. Deuteronomy 31 verse eight goes on to say, he not only went before you, he's here with you now. John five verse 17, Jesus answers us. When we ask the question, God, where are you? Jesus answers the question and he says, my father's always working and so am I. Right now in Deuteronomy 31 verse eight, he says, he's with you. He's never gonna leave you. He's never gonna forsake you. God is on your right side holding you up and Jesus is on your left side holding you up. Having done all to stand, and you think I can't make it anymore. So stand therefore and you're not standing alone. God is standing with you. He is fighting for you. You are fighting from a place of victory, not from a place of defeat. So I wanna tell you this, come on, you've, got this because God's got you. What has God spoken to you to do? What have you already heard a whisper of in your heart? But you're like, <clears throat> get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Who did he tell you to help? What did he tell you to lead? Who did he tell you to forgive? Who did he tell you to build a bridge? Lord, I didn't burn it. <laughs> Who did he tell you to build a bridge with? Where did he tell you to stay? Did he even tell you to give away your very last cake and go ahead and think you're gonna starve? Everybody say, but God. But God. Ooh, I preached a message one time called, you don't know my God. Mm, if you're in the mood to shout, you can look that up on YouTube. Everybody say, sweet. Sweet. And, salty. and salty. We've got a recipe for success. And what are we doing with it? So 1 Kings verse 13, 1 Kings 17, 13. Eliza says, don't be afraid. He says, go home and do have you have said. Go home and make you and your son a little cake. Go ahead and take care of you first. You know, we don't like to admit it, but we typically do take care of us first before we take care of what God told us to do. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but how about me? Is that okay if I just say that about me? I, ha I will not leave the house without brushing my teeth. But I have left the house without reading my Bible. I'm probably alone, but if I'm not, go ahead and shout while I'm not looking. It says, go ahead. He says, but first. He said, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do what you said. But first, make a small bread of cake for me. You make me a little something. Well, the audacity of that man. Why would he ask her for something that he shouldn't? She's barely got anything. He says, go ahead and make a little cake for me and then make something for you and your son. And this is what the Lord God says. The jar of flour is not going to be used up. And the oil, it won't go away. It's not going to run dry until the day the Lord gives rain. 
He asks us for what we've got so that he can give us what he's got. And we get to thinking that it's like really for right away. We think it's for right now. Given you shall receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over, shall man give into your bosom. Whether you're given friendship, whether you're given time, whether you're given love, whether you're given like the middle finger in traffic. <laughs> Give, uh, yeah, I know y'all are too holy. You're like, oh gosh, she watched me on the way here. <laughs> No, we don't want to pour out. We don't want to pour out time to God because it's costing us. We don't want to pour out to our fighting kids to get them to do what he's telling us to do. We don't want to pour into a relationship where that man is sour all the time. We don't want to do what God has told us to do with all our might, forgiving, releasing, and trusting. It's not costing you. It's your recipe for success. Come on, somebody. We like our cake so much. I work so hard on this. I like my cake so much. I like this. I don't really want to share it with everybody. I just want my friends to have some. (laughs) But here she is in in verse 15. She goes away, and she does what Elijah tells her to do. Everybody say, praise God. God. And then there was food. Here's the, she sowed, and immediately she reaped. And there was enough flour and enough oil for all of the days. It never ran dry. Man, I love the icing on the cake. The icing on the cake. This is one of the decorated cakes that came in for the contest. How many of y'all know I ain't winning? (laughs) David is the master of getting the icing off the cake. You see, when we first got married, I didn't really make cakes. I made pies. And he would come in. We'd have company come in. And he would eat a piece of pie before the company came. Hello, this face. It's like you can't mess it up before they come. So he learned how to like get in under the crust (laughs) with a little spoon and get some of the goodness out and not get busted. He learned the perfect way to get the icing off the edge if I made a cake and I wouldn't notice that it was gone. (laughs) And it was tasty. We like the icing. We like immediately eating the benefits of when God blesses us because of what we've done. But everybody say, there's more to the cake. But I can't tell on them and not tell on me. I would go to Mrs. Fields and back in the day, they made only muffin tops. And I would eat just the muffin top. Why do you even need to eat the rest of the muffin? Oh, P.S., if you lick all the icing off of a cupcake, it is a muffin and muffins are healthy. Hey family, are you like me? If you ever wanted to talk to God but thought, hmm, would the creator of the universe actually want to talk to me? The answer is yes. But you're probably thinking, how does that work anyway? I'm not sure how to pray or what I'm supposed to say. I get it. Sometimes that's how I feel. Believe it or not, I get feeling lost, alone, and kind of unsure of myself. So I started writing down all my personal conversations and speaking directly to God. Actually, that's how I wrote, hi God, it's me again. What to pray when you don't know what to say. Face it, we're all busy and we have so many things pulling at our attention. We know we should go to God even in our craziness, but how do we find the time? Hi God is full of easy to read chapters that will encourage and empower you to start having your own regular daily conversations with God. To thank you for being such a great partner with the television program and the ministry, I'd love to send you a free chapter to help get you started. Just go to my website, nicolecrank.com forward slash hi God and request your free chapter or get this just for your gift of $10. We will send you the entire book. I promise it's going to make a dramatic difference in your life. Either way, Don't forget to connect with me on social media and tell me all about your high God time. I'd love to hear from you. (laughs) 
me and my mom don't cook the same at all. But the funny thing is, my dad likes her food and my husband likes my food. If I try and make my mom's recipe, my husband is not a happy man, and to be honest with you, neither am I when I eat the food. We just cook different. That's the funny thing about trying to make somebody else's recipe. When you do, you're just a knockoff of who they are, and your people aren't gonna like it from you because it's not you, it's not authentic. You gotta be who you are. I'm in the airport right now, and it's what I do, right? I think the fourth airport I was in this week, the funny thing about airports is when I get in an airplane and get in the sky, my husband always laughs at me. I love it. I enjoy it. I love being on an airplane like most people like being at the beach. Why? It's my recipe. I was called to it. I was called to be in an airport. I was called to go from city to city. I was called to live in two different cities. But that might not be your call and that's okay. Don't try to be who I am. Be who you are. So what's that weird thing about you? Do you like airports better than beaches? Do you like beaches better than airports? Do you like cold weather? Do you like staying in? Do you like being with people? Do you think best when you're alone? Work who you are. Bake your cake, baby. I wanna to submit to you today, you would miss the biggest blessing that God has for you if you walk away when it's tough. Come on. If you're gonna walk away from God, if you're gonna make that decision, do it when everything is great. Don't do it when everything is rough. Because when everything is rough, God is in heaven saying there is a recipe for your success and the only person that knows it is not on this planet. He's up there trying to talk to us. Galatians 6, 9, and let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we don't give up. <laughs> Baby, you can't take out a half-baked cake. Have you ever done that? I have done that. You ever been hungry? Oh, I'm the worst at it with cornbread. You need the cornbread when the stew is hot and the family's hungry and you think it's good and you do, you jiggle it. Jiggle it. Just, oh, no, my daughter's about to freak out. I'll quit. <laughs> my niece is on the front row. Haley, are you six? Yeah. Haley's six, and she goes. <laughs> but you jiggle it, and it doesn't jiggle, so you take it out, you cut it, and you think it's all right, and you take a bite, and you realize you've made a really bad decision. <laughs> we stop half-baked with God. We stop in that tough spot and we're like, forget it. Relationship's too hard. And God says, no, wait a minute. So she goes to the man of God, gets salty with him. And in, in verse 19, the man of God doesn't let it affect him. God, he's representing God in this. God doesn't let him let it affect him. When we're like, where are you, God? He's like, been here all the time. <laughs> and he says, give that son to me. I'm going to take him upstairs. You know, that's what the man of God is still in the proximity of the woman. The woman is still in the proximity of the man of God. That's why when you came in tonight, there was an iConnect thing on your chair. There's a little card that said, join an iConnect. Why? Well, let me talk to Texas and California and Tennessee and Lebanon and I don't know those other states, Wisconsin and, and these other states. Let me talk to you if you're far away because you might be saying, well, I can't join an iConnect. I, I live far away. That's what online iConnects are for. Why do we want you in an eye connect? Because when you are alone, it's you versus the world. But when you have praying people surrounding you, if the widow was alone, she'd have ended up in a very different spot, but she was still with Elisha. So she said, what am I going to do? I'm in a mess. And he said, give me the boy. Her faith was shaken. His shuff hat was still on straight. He still knew God. He still knew what God would do. He still knew that God was good. God's good all the time. <laughs> Y'all saved. <laughs> so he cries out, Lord, Lord, my God, you brought this tragedy upon this widow. I'm staying with her. Is he going to die? And he stretched himself out on the boy, and he yelled out three times, and the Lord heard Elijah's cry. It says in verse 22, and Elijah picked up the boy and carried it back to the mama. 
Now, he didn't carry a dead boy. That's what he got. He carried back a live boy to the mama. He carried a live boy, a live blessing. So let me just frame this up in, in your world. He carried a checkbook that was $200 in the negative and the rent was due for the third month in a row and you didn't know how it was going to pay. And he, he took that red checkbook and he made it black and he had a check come in, not enough for just this month's rent, but for the two other ones we haven't been able to pay yet. He can resurrect finances. He took a medical report. He took, a, he took seizures, and he saw them, and they said, I don't know that we can fix it, and I don't think that we can fix it. And he found a doctor that said, I think I can fix it. And he put them all together in the same place at the same time, and seizures that were happening are not happening anymore. Everybody say, we serve, we serve. A, God a God of miracles. But if we back out... We lose, we lose the success. success. And you might be thinking, but other people are trying. Other people are ahead of me. Other people are, are trying to do what I'm doing. You don't understand she's after my husband. You don't understand he's after my job. You don't understand. They're trying to push me out. Baby, they might have your recipe, but they can't bake your cake. <laughs> that we got to spend some time together today. But together is not just me getting to talk to you. Together is you talking back to me. So I want to hear from you. I want you to go to NicoleCrank.com. What are you thinking when you see the show? What would you like to see on the show? Uh, is the show impacting you? Have you shared the show with somebody? Is there a question you want answered on the show? Is there somebody you'd like me to talk with? I've got all kinds of fun interviews coming up with some people that you are gonna love. Like Roma Downey from Touch by an Angel. I can't wait for y'all to talk with her. And oh my gosh, I've, I, I, can't, I just can't even tell you what all we have lined up. Just set your DVR. In the meantime, I wanna see you on social media and I want you to get that free download on on NicoleCrank.com. I'll see you next time. Morning, and welcome to the Nicole Crank Show. Let's get right into it. Leash right here. Beautiful. Isn't that just how so many people get stuck? Anymore, you find yourself in some interesting situations. Okay, Nicole Craig's getting ready. Incredible. They might have your recipe. But they can't bake your cake. I believe God has put us together today. By faith, don't be scared of that mountain. I wanted to talk to you about the proven way to start your day. 